Okay, this should be fun. Today I'm going to make a bowl with an illusion. This is very similar to a picture of a huge star made out of marble that I saw on a floor. It was called a Texas Star Medallion. I'm going to see if I can do this out of wood. I have four laminated boards here. They are made up of a piece of walnut and a piece of maple. I will be cutting these pieces much shorter and then make four angle cuts on each of those pieces before gluing them together. Stick around and see if I can create this illusion. It'll be lots of fun. Now let's get going. So let me cut a couple of these boards and nothing here except cutting them to length. I have a stop set here. Okay, I've got them all cut. I ended up with 18 pieces. I really only need six. I like to have extra pieces, but I went ahead and made the boards long enough to possibly make two of what I'm doing if I decide I like it. So let's get set up and we'll start cutting angles on them. Here's six of the 18 pieces. I have them all cleaned up. I'll cut the angle on one end of these right now and show you how they go together. I'm using this sled that I made for special cuts. I really can't do this on my wedgie sled so I'll do it on this. I've used this for various things. It's pinned to cut exactly 30 degrees on each side making a 60 degree included angle. So I'll show you how I cut these and then we will assemble it without glue of course and you'll see how they go together. And make sure everything's clean goes into place, lock it down. Okay, now it's going to get a little tricky. I'm going to cut an angle on this upper part. So this is fairly easy here because all I have to do is put it in here. I still have a nice long leg to keep that square. Okay, I think I have it figured out where I can get all the pieces cut exactly the same. I just took one of the cutoffs from the first cut that I did on that long side and I've got it fastened right here. I adjusted it so that my cut would be what I wanted and this is what we now have. So I'll cut a few of these and then it'll be time to start gluing them together. But it's just a matter of putting this in up against here up against my stop. Okay, I think I did promise to show you what it is going to turn into. But that's only part of it. So now I'm just gluing them into pairs. I get glue on both sides, slide them together a little bit, and I'll let them sit for a while. All right, let's go ahead and glue this star together. This is a paper template of the next piece I need. Actually, the next six pieces I need. I'll mark around it and I'll transfer it down into save lumber I'll turn it around and mark it. We'll get six of those cut out. I'll be back. We'll set them up on the sled and start cutting the angles accurately.
All right, I'm going to glue them together two at a time so I can get a clamp across them. I'm cutting segments for the main part of the body. There will be four rings with 18 segments for each ring. I'm using padauk or paduk, however you want to say it. I really don't know for sure, but I think you get the idea. All the joints fit good and the hose clamps brought them into a nice round ring. I've got all of the segmented rings glued up flattened one side and now I'm going to start gluing it to the bottom of the bowl. I'm going to use my coal jaws to just help line them up. Same process for three more rings. All right, I glued another ring on here. It's cherry, and there's 18 segments in this ring, as well as all the rest of them. And I think it's just going to look better with the cherry on the top and the bottom, and the paduk in between. Now I need to create a shape on here and find out how much I can cut on the inside. So let's get going. Five eighths bowl gouge and about 900 RPMs. That disc on the inside is hot glued on there and I turned a tenon on it. I did that at the beginning so I could flatten the bottom out and get another disc hot glued on there with the tenon. That way I could start the glue up. I left the disc on just so I could have the tail stuck support. I'm going to get set up and I'm going to clean the inside up before I go any more here. All right, it's time to cut the inside. I'm just going to get it smooth. Here's the block with the tenon cut on it that I mentioned. And I'll leave it on just a little bit longer, even though I don't think I need it. I'm going to start by just making everything round. Then I'll look at what I have on the inside and the outside, see what I can do to finish the shape. I'm going to go the same speed, about 900. And I'm going to switch to a 3 8 bowl gouge. Actually, I switched to a half inch bowl gouge. Right here I switched to my small hollowing tool so I can create a little fillet at the bottom. Okay, so I took that tannin off the middle of here. I'm ready to use a negative rake scraper on the sides and then we'll go down and do the bottom. Okay, it's time to sand. I'm going to start with 80 grit. I'll work my way up to at least 400. I'll do a little on the inside. I'll show you a little on the outside and then I'll get it all sanded up and come back and we'll put some finish on the inside.
Okay, that's going to be pretty easy. So when I come back, we're going to put a finish on the inside. All set to put the sanding sealer on. What I'm using is a Minwax water-based sanding sealer. I'll get a couple coats of that on and then I will use the polycrylic. I'll put it on with a soft cloth. And I just like to wipe this on. So pretty much that is all there is to it. When this is dry I'll Probably sand it with 500. It was scotch bright. Put another coat on. Okay, I'll I'll see you when we're ready to put the polycrylic on. Maybe I'll show you the polycrylic going on the outside. Okay, I did say I would show you how I put the polycrylic on. This has already got two coats of sanding sealer. And it's actually got four coats of polycrylic, and I'm going to go with five. I went over it with scotch Brite in between each coat. So now I have my lathe running in reverse, and I've got it going real slow. And I'm just going to apply it and work it across. And I have a I'll coat on that and then I'll just look it over make sure I don't have any runs or dry spots and if I do it's easy enough just to blend those in like that I find that the polycrylic does dry in 30 minutes and you can recoat it I think that's what the can says I was able to put all this on in uh, probably four hours and not even rushing it. Okay, the only thing left to do is remove this tenon which is hot glued on there and sand that area and get finish on it. The turning is done. So I'm going to let this sit all night and I'll probably go over it with abrasive paste but we'll find out tomorrow morning. All right, I said last night I'd probably use the abrasive paste on it, and I think I will. So I'm going to use the Axe abrasive paste. So I'm running in reverse. And I'm running about 500. Speed depends on the diameter of what you're doing. There's a lot more surface feet passing me here than there is on a 6 inch diameter. That's how I kind of base my speeds. Okay, I think I'll go ahead and use the polishing paste. Okay, I'll go ahead and run this forward so you can see a little better. Okay, that's it. I like it. So like I said last night, the bottom is really done. I'll go ahead and get the tenon off of there and get a finish on it and then we'll be all finished. Well, here it is. I'm really happy with it. I call this the Star Illusion Bowl. Star is made out of maple and walnut and the shadowing effect gives it depth. Even though it's flat, it looks like it's raised in the middle. I'm 
intrigued by that look. I saw a picture of a floor one time. I bet it had a 10-foot diameter star in there done very similar to this. I told myself one of these days I'm going to do that. And so I did. And I'm really happy with it. So besides the walnut and maple, there's cherry in between it. And then there's paduke around here, which is probably one of the most beautiful woods around. And the top rim is made out of cherry. It finished 10 and 3 quarter inches diameter. It's 3 and 5 eighths inches tall. And the base is 9 and a quarter. And I have one more piece of wood in there, and that's a piece of koa. I wanted the bottom to look different than the inside, so I inlaid that into there. And I really like it. I like it a lot. It's really pretty. So I finished it with Minwax Water-Based Sanding Sealer, two coats. And then I used five coats of the Minwax Polycrylic, and I think it's a nice finish. Because of the wood that's in here, I actually wanted to give it more depth. So I used the Axe Abrasive Paste and Polishing Paste to bring out all the depth I could in that Paduke. I'm really happy with that. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment, I read them all. Hit the notification bell so you'll know when I have a new one out. It would also be great if you could share my videos around. Thanks to all of you who are subscribed to my channel. It means a lot to me. If you're not subscribed, consider doing so. I do many types of turnings, from segmented work to natural turnings from pieces of trees, and I put out videos weekly. Thanks again. Until the next time, see you later.